नमस्कार आई एम जी पी राव आई हैव द प्लेजर ऑफ डिक्लेरिंग दिस सेशन एज ओपन आई स्टार्टेड ए जर्नी विद ए कंपनी कॉल्ड गुड पीपल रिलेशंस डिस्कवरिंग कनेक्टिंग गुड पीपल बट देन द अल्टीमेट इज द गुड पीपल शुड डू गुड टू द कम्युनिटी एट लार्ज that's where i connected with a better person so we also need better people that is sri anish and uh, be a part of a journey of creating a new vision for the community and started a series called leadership awakening series next slide please in this series we get the leaders to a round table discuss on a contemporary relevant impactful topic and believe and trust that leaders will make a difference because leaders will inspire hundreds and thousands of their followers so as you have seen on the slide the first one was on integrating science and spirituality then we moved on we discussed on compassionate leadership particularly after getting that lesson from the pandemic that leaders who are compassionate they survived and succeeded and inspired helped people at last so we had the session on compassionate leadership then we sri anish guided us and then we did a program on emotional resilience because resilience is one leadership trait and quality competence that enables the team to beat the stress the pandemic the casualties then we move to a different kind of topic sri ani shared it's not about the fittest it's about the kindest can we create kind leaders yes. kind people kind employees kind citizens so a kind community so that was the the fourth one the fifth one we came back to the capabilities in the new yuga you need some critical path breaking trail blazing capabilities that was on the critical capabilities in the new yuga so and today it's a different topic it is when action becomes karma yoga so when the karta does his karma and if he adds yoga into it so it brings in the purity of the intent and the perfection in the action so for this we have none other than sri anish as the moderator and three best people amongst the good people community that we have we have chosen them as the panelist so i have the pleasure of introducing one by one first is sri anish here is a personality a spiritual teacher an author a visionary started his career in hr created an enterprise in fact co-founded people stone and 15 years ago he moved to himalayas in search of truth in search of wisdom in search of knowledge in search of the buddha moment and today he is in a position in 2019 created a community of spiritual aspirants called it sadhu sangha and he set down in the himalayan state of dharmashala and uh, his vision is to create an awakened leadership and uh, some of you must have seen his book let the mud settle this has been recently published thank you sri anish for agreeing to moderate today's session we'll move on we were in search of the right panelist for this particular topic somebody who excelled dr viswamohan pansal so he started as a civil servant excelled as a ias officer 
And during his tenure, he did some corporate stunts. So while in the government, he made a disrupt to the corporate world. And after his retirement, he went, got into academics and continued his passion of industry, academia, interface, integrating with the government. And you will see his board. You will see the richness in the board. His board of NDIM has got two Padma Bhushans, one Padma Bhushan and three Padma Shris. That's the kind of good will he enjoys. That's the kind of integration he has been able to actualize corporate world, academia, and the government, and the community at last. <clears throat> during his regime, during his tenure, he has co created the future leaders. So, yes, he has been leading industry, academia, interface, and he gets a large number of people mentor the students and the future managers. Thank you, Dr. Bansal, to be panelist today. Moving on, <clears throat> we're in search of a young leader and we got Amit Malik, he's the CEO and MD of AVIVA India. So we just, I just see the rich profile. He started with Bank of America, in fact, GSK, then American Express, RBS, Bank of America, and he has been with Eviva since 2012, and today he's the CEO and MD, and uh, he's richly qualified, and uh, he's making a difference, his organization, the industry at last, and of course to the community. So, Amit is our next panelist. Welcome, Amit, to this panel. Last but not the least, someone who has excelled as a CEO. He was the head of a 10,000 crore super brand, Havels, as the president. And he made a difference that industry and that company. And post his retirement, he does motivational sessions and he has recently written a book called Reset Your Life. See the awards, we have chosen a few. Peter Rucker Memorial Award Excellence to the best ICT implementers, the Smart City Awards. Number of awards he gets. So in Sri Anil, we see a successful professional, a motivational speaker and a thought leader. So with these three able panelists, and the right moderator. So we are looking forward to a great session of moving, converting, transforming, action, karma yoga. And the format is, once the panel discussion is over, there will be space for Q&A. So all of you who have got some thoughts, some questions, some ideas, please feel free to write in the chat box. If it is a question, start with a capital Q so that it will draw the attention of the panelist or the moderator. Start with a capital Q and write your question and write in brief. So, so with this, I'll hand over to Sri Anish for moderating the session. Then later, look forward to your questions, your insight, your suggestions, your ideas. Thank you so much. Thank you, GP. Thank you for this very, very profound introduction. And I am saying profound because I know all this, all the panelists, all the dear panelists. But when I hear the introduction, the way you uh, put it across, you know, it feels really profound because their profiles and their backgrounds and their wisdom is deeply profound. So thanks for uh, putting it across that way. Thank you. Um, Namaste all the dear friends who are joining this session and welcome back once again. Uh, it's been a pleasure and it's also a great honor today to be moderating this session with these three stalwarts, these three visionaries in their own sense, these three uh, established pillars uh, in their own respective fields to be moderating the session in the presence of 
these three stalwarts. So I'm feeling really honored. Thank you, my dear co-panelists, for being part of this session today. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> when we were thinking about this thought, this topic, uh, that leadership is all about transformation. Usually when we think about transformation, we think about external transformation. But to me, leadership is also about, or rather, first is about internal transformation. And through the internal transformation, the external transformation also happens. So we thought about transformational leadership and we said, let's pick this topic of Karam Yoga and for few reasons. And I think today's uh, dialogue and discussion could be uh, deeply thought provoking. It might break some of our old concepts around this term called Karam Yoga. I picked up this topic because Karam Yoga as a concept, as a philosophy is very close to my heart. It is also extremely relevant in today's time. But there's a lot of misconception around this term. So today we're going to talk about that. We're going to look at it from a very different lens. And this is just not a concept or a philosophy. This is a practical application of Karam Yoga, which is also deeply transformative. And I feel, especially the leaders, when I said the internal transformation is much more important because that's what leads to external transformation in our personal lives, in our professional lives, in our societal life. And this one thought, this one understanding of Karam Yoga can actually put us on this transformative journey. The state of earth, the state of human well-being today, the state of human consciousness, the state of our businesses, the planet at large, all the leaders in whichever sphere of life they operate must enter into a transformative journey. And Karam Yoga is a very ancient but a very, very contemporary tool also. So I thought, how should we deal with this? Uh, before that, the format, as GP said, uh, just to add a few things, I'll speak for about eight, nine minutes to set the context and then open the discussion for the panelists and uh, invite them for specific questions on specific questions. But before that, let's look at Karam Yoga. You know, there's a process in the ancient Indian tradition called Neti Neti. If you want to understand something, you first look at what it is not. Neti Neti. So I thought, let's look at Karam Yoga from that perspective. And keep in mind, take a mental note, this could be thought-provoking today. Yeah. I meet a lot of people who are very actively engaged in the world, who constantly are in the doing space, in the body, in the mind. And when I ask them uh, about their journey, they say, we are Karam Yogis. Neti Neti. It is not Karam Yoga. Most of the people who are really workaholic feel themselves as Karam Yogis. You know, workaholic as a term comes from alcoholic, holic, which is about obsession. If, if I have an obsession about continuously engaged in work, that's an obsession. That's not Karam Yoga. So that's not Karam Yoga, number one. Number two, our need to be constantly engaged. And, and I see a lot of people have this deep need to be constantly engaged because of the inability to sit quiet, because of the inability to enter into a pause of reflection. They have a constant need to be engaged and they think they are Karam Yogis or this is Karam Yoga. No, Neti Neti. This too is not Karam Yoga. Number three. I work in an organization, I put in an extra effort, I'm doing what I'm told or what my job is, what my job demands, I do all of that. My eyes are always on the next increment, next promotion, uh, the person I'm competing with or the organization I'm competing with. And because of that pressure of competition or the desire to get a reward or a bonus or a next increment, I put in a lot of extra work and I think I'm a Karam Yogi. That too, my friends, is not Karam Yoga. Number four, I have a family to sustain. I have to take care of my family. I need to earn and do a lot of work because I need to take care of my family. I have this responsibility of my family on me. And because of that responsibility, I'm using the word responsibility. And it comes from because I'm attached to my family, I feel a sense of responsibility. And even in that zone, sometimes I don't want to work, but I have to work. 
and I put in extra effort, extra hours, and I think I'm a karam yogi. My friends, that too is not karam yoga. Then what is really karam yoga? I thought let's I'll share a small story, and this is a this is just not a story. This is a real truth. This is a real story. It happened in 1989. Harvard uh, School of Management and some other uh, senior professors and academicians around the world use this as a case study. So I thought I'll quickly talk about that. In 1989, there was a gentleman called H. McCoy, the then managing director of Morgan Stanley U.S. He, with his uh, set of team, was on a 60-day Himalayan expedition somewhere in Nepal. In this team of expedition, there were people from different countries, Australia, Japan, New Zealand, etc. So cross-cultural. And when they are on this expedition, and if you know about some of the Himalayan expedition, they're really tough. They test your resilience of body-mind. So he was on a such uh, expedition. While they were on an expedition, they had a particular goal because you need to time your expedition. You need to time every day what time in the morning you start, what time till the afternoon you will walk, etc. On the journey, they see a naked sadhu. Naked sadhu in the Himalayan mountains with the snow all around. This naked sadhu is shivering. He probably had hypothermia. The the chill has gone into him. He is, you know, uh, half awake, half unconscious. So the team goes to the sadhu. They do whatever they thought is best or they did their bit as the phrase goes. Everybody did their bit for the sadhu. They provided him uh, some food. They provided him some clothes. Now the challenge was to save somebody from hypothermia, you need to bring the person down to the lower elevation. This team had a goal to reach a certain peak. They didn't want to be distracted. They had a certain goal in mind. They didn't want to spend their resources bringing the sadhu down to a safer location. So they actually put the sadhu on one of the rock there in the sun. It was a daytime. They thought they did their bit for the welfare or the well-being or for saving the sadhu. And they continued their journey. When they came back from the journey and when H. McCoy came back to his uh, home after the expedition was over. They did reach the peak after the expedition of, was over. Nobody knew what happened to the sadhu. But this thought kept disturbing H. McCoy for many years. He kept thinking, did we do the right thing? Now, if you see the entire action that happened, the entire scenario, the event, they had a predetermined goal they were too focused on that predetermined goal and they were absolutely self-oriented. They were absolutely self-oriented. Their action was just okay because they all did their bit, but their action was not excellent. When the entire orientation is on the self, achieving the goal for the self, that's not Karam Yoga. When the action is just okay and not excellent, that's not Karam Yoga because Karam Yoga is perfection of action. Perfection of your action is also Karam Yoga. H. McCoy kept thinking about this, that his action was not perfect. It was just okay. Their action was justifiable, but not praiseworthy. And there's a difference. It was not extraordinary. The intention was not pure enough to save the sadhu. Hence, the action was not extraordinary. They lost an opportunity to be the heroes. They could have been the heroes for the rest of their lives, in themselves, may not be in the media, but each one of them would have felt a great hero. A great sense of joy, motivation would have come to them. They lost that opportunity. They lost the opportunity for seva. This is one in a lifetime opportunity which comes to people. Their action was not really exemplary as leader. H. McCoy, the managing director of Morgan Stanley, one would say if you are a leadership and if you are on a transformational journey as a leader, your action should be exemplary. People should learn from your action. People should imbibe some great wisdom from your action. But that day, H. McCoy's action was not exemplary. 
not exemplary leader. And the action, if you look at this particular action, they did not leave their comfort zone. Because if they had to take the sadhu down to a lower altitude, they they needed to get out of their comfort zone. They did not get out of the comfort zone. They remained in the comfort zone. Defies the philosophy of Karam Yoga. And also, there was one person in their group who felt deeply for the sadhu. If I'm not wrong, this person was a Japanese. But this Japanese guy could not convince the others to take a joint decision for the welfare of that sadhu. He could not. His resolve, his intensity of resolve was not strong enough. So he chose to align with that which was not exemplary. Now, so what is Karam Yoga? Can we really define it? I wrote seven points about that. There are seven attributes of Karam Yoga. I thought I'll quickly talk about that and then open it to my panelist. The action that we do, which is beyond self-gain, remember the parable of the sadhu. Their, their, their action was not beyond self-gain. If your action is beyond self-gain, you're entering into a transformational process of Karam Yoga. If your action is perfect, if you are working towards perfecting the action, you know, I see especially around, uh, and I've seen this in my household also when I was growing up. We used to, you know, donate old clothes to beggars, to sadhus, to people, to NGOs, old clothes, torn clothes. And we thought we are doing dana, we are doing a good karma. But if I looked at that and I said, if you're not really doing good karma, we are getting our, we are emptying the space in our house, getting rid of the things that we don't need, can be called garbage. And we thought we are doing a great karma. It is not great karma because there is no perfection in that. Had I go and get the best clothes from the market and then donated them, it would have been qualified as karma yoga because the action would have been perfect. Yeah. So that's the second trait. Purity of intention is the third trait. If I'm obsessive about the end goal alone and not looking at the right means in the journey, which I see happening in the business world a lot, we are obsessed with the end goal. We don't think about the means. Any means will do. So purity of intention is questioned here. That if you are working on the purity of your intention, that is Karam Yoga. If the bhav of all my work is towards service, there's a new concept we all know about, servant leadership. A beautiful concept. A very Indic concept. Because in the servant leadership, there's a bhav of seva. The service orientation. In all my works, if there's service orientation, I am actually activating Karam Yoga and this is transforming me. Fifth trait. The action becomes then exemplary. The world starts to follow the action. Exemplary Karam Yoga. And all leaders, because in the in any case, the world is looking up to the leaders. The world does as the leader do. Hence, their action must be exemplary. Fifth trait of Karam Yoga. The ability to leave the comfort zone. And I say that uh, there are three professions I, I feel largely, and there could be more added to the list. A king, which is the head of the organization, which is a leader. A teacher of any sorts, coach, mentor, trainer, they all form and get in the category of teacher. These two must never look at their comfort zones. Their jobs, their dedication to their work must be such that they don't consider being in the comfort zone ever. So for leaders, there is no comfort zone. You've chosen to be leader to take a certain larger responsibility. Get out of the comfort zone. Sixth component of Karam Yoga, leaving all the comfort zone behind. And last but not the least, inspiring the others. My action, which is not self-oriented, which is good for the world, which is I'm considering I'm getting out of my comfort zone, should be such that it is able to inspire others to walk the journey of transformation. That's the seventh trait of Karam Yoga. And Karam Yoga brings, according to me, nine different transformations. I'll not talk about them right now. I'll talk about it during the course of our discussion. 
yeah and if i forget do remind me one of you yeah that there are nine transformations that karma yoga brings in our inner being in our productivity in our performance in our success and all of that i'll talk about that but before we talk about that i now would would like to invite my panelist and get their views and their wisdom because each one of them has a deep vast wisdom to learn from that so i first invite uh, shri bansal ji and my question is i know the current world bansal ji we operate in the world of pressures performance and you know different means and you know speed and we need to get there fast and all of that in this world context is karma yoga possible is the true karma yoga possible bansal ji in fact it is not in this world alone uh, sri anishi uh, you know, when you read your history you read your scriptures uh, you you even read the or listen to the life stories of the greatest gurus or saints also i presume that this difficulty whatever we feel today has always been there today only one difference seems to be there is that there are less of siri and niche in the society okay we, we remember times of maybe kabir or rahim or farid or gurunanak okay when the society had at in a, in a particular decade or a particular century such great gurus that their flavor was automatically going to all the places so to be honest it has never been possible it has never been easy and you rightly said we may claim to be karma yogis this is like going to the himalayas sitting at the base camp we are all sitting at the base camp and we presume that we have gone to the first of the second of the fourth stage of himalayas no not at all this is possible only only i i believe it i believe well i'm talking to you all my hair is standing in my body it happens only if there's a guru kripa or prabhu kripa if there's something like this in your parents in your grandparents in the environment that you have been brought up and if it's possible only if you are in constant touch as as it called sad sangat okay if you are in continuous touch with sad sangat possibly the color comes out to you mm. so otherwise it's all here say i mean i have to be very straight on to this yeah. beautiful beautiful i i i love the profundity and the straightness with which you said not mincing the words and you brought the truth about this to all of us thank you bansal ji i now invite anil ji to share his views on the same question the question remains the same anil is karam yoga really possible in today's world in this current context where we live in anil ji yeah anil ji it is possible uh, in my all the webinars which i have been doing in the last uh, one and a half two years i start my presentation with one word that there is a difference between human beings and animals human our animal human being is ill equipped and defenseless we are ill equipped and defenseless we can't fly we can't swim we can't run we can't bite we are ill equipped and defenseless but we have one ability which has been given by god is ability to think and whatever we can think we can do it whether positive or negative now at times our parents or grandparents always say that we have grown you up we have made you study this these all are kriyas there is a difference between kriya and karma all animals they do kriya only as a human being we can do karma and i read in the gita i don't have the much of the, the knowledge what you have anish but to put it in the simple words i say that in gita they say if you want to reach the god or the creator i will not use the word god i will use the word creator then there are two ways one is the bhakti and dhyan which you are doing it uh, the other is karma and gyan gyan means knowledge and karma means action 
you see there are the people get confused with the words positive attitude if you are positive positive attitude does not guarantee you for any success positive attitude with proper action i'll once again repeat positive attitude with proper action increases the probability of success does not guarantee you for any success but what we don't do is we don't do the action and we don't do the proper action india has got a population of 130 crores how many people can go and stand in the olympics in the athletics in 100 200 or 400 or 800 meter race why because we don't do the proper action you have used the word in your uh, seven point is perfection so unless the proper things are not there we all have the wishes we all have the desire we all have the uh, some faith but we don't do the proper action and those people those who are successful in any part of their life are the people those who take proper action so i think uh, karma is uh, doing your duty at your best without involvement of ego or attachment i have seen many professionals in my professional career that the problem was not of the competence the problem was of the comp- uh, compatibility they come from a different organization or a different family and they want the other people to do and the other thing what i want to say is that the purpose has to be very clear why we are born the day we are born we know but we should ask ourselves why we are born i think what we are doing how we are doing we all know but why we are doing is is to be taught to our children unfortunately britishers have ruled us for a very long time our education system is only made to uh, take a degree after taking a degree you take a job after taking a job you earn money in this 25 years we are not taught anything about the life we are only taught how to earn money which is not correct i think money is not the only thing which you have to live in your life when you reach at the age of 50 or 60 money is immaterial to kehte hain koyal apni kook se ped apne phal se khet apni upaj se aur insaan apni soch aur karmo ki wajah se hi jana jata hai kya baat i think whatever you can think and whatever you can do is the uh, very important thing and i t- tell our youth uh, at times wo kehte hain khwaishon se nahi khirte phool joli mein khwaishon se nahi khirte phool joli mein waqt ki shaakhaon ko hilana hoga kuch nahi hoga andheron ko bura kehne se apne hisse ka deepak khud hi jalana hoga so you yeah. have to do the action yourself don't depend upon government parents your society nobody will do unless you act yourself and apne is jagah deepak jab tak khud nahi jalaoge tab tak kuch nahi hone wala beautiful beautiful anil ji beautiful the perspective that you you brought to this now i go to amit amit you are in the center of you know the financial uh, process so to say huh? you 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 had an organization which is large insurance which has a lot of finances and all of that how do you view karam do you think is it really possible to practice karam yoga in this world this context priyanish thank you for having me you know i'm feeling like a tail ender where the dhonis and the tendulkars and the kohlis have already come and batted and i kept striking <laughs> off points saying this stroke done this stroke played this stroke played this stroke played but you know as i was listening to you and you set out the seven tenets and then you know i listened to bansal ki analogy and i was looking at it from an organization context if you look at an organization context and let's just you know when we, when we talk of the organization i just bring the employee in the center now you know and when you look at an employee and when you look at karam yoga i think it has to do with service it has to do with selflessness and it has to do with helping others you know now that that could be a colleague that could be a customer that could be a partner you know and that's that's what it is so when i look at karam yoga i see that to be a force that is created by a person's action what action you do you know how do you behave you know whether you assist others by spreading positivity in the organization do you actually act unselfishly whether it's at home it's at work it's for your customers or strangers you know in the organization today we ask employee for commitment we ask them for involvement right and then we check them for their intention to stay or quit you know and in a desperate attempt as an organization we then start to give them financial incentives perquisites which are very very temporary in nature and don't provide a long term solution you know anil ji alluded to this uh, and i'm i'm going to build on this is i think it's very important for us or for a person to believe that his or her job 
has a higher purpose and that purpose is aligned to the organization's purpose you know every organization has a purpose how well the organization lives a purpose and how well the leaders in that organization are able to link and label the alignment of an individual's purpose to the organization's purpose i think that's the ultimate goal that we have you know in that connection in that bonding or in that relatable relatability of a joint purpose will the person be motivated to look for look for doing their work which is beyond the reward you know then the repetitive mundane work that i come from 9 to 9 or 9 to 6 or whatever the role that is transactional the role that gives me a sense of isolation what am i doing links to the purpose and brings a different outlook in in that individual you know the leaders will have to and it's in, and it's an ownership on leaders now you know whether like bachi ji you had a education institution or you had an organization you know that that drives purpose creates value you know we all look at value but we sometimes forget that purpose is the one that from where the value is coming you know the uh, there i was reading about this and i was researching before i came here and i i got to know of this conscious business institute right which operates on a conscious business i don't know how many of the listeners are aware and i was i was i just got aware of it recently which means you know they are going to look at the company's impact on workers consumers environment around it. and i think if you look and i was when i was reading about this i thought this so much beautifully integrates the ideals of karma yoga at office some of that you know you also mentioned that translates into a happier employee which in turn will translate into a better product which in turn will translate into a better customer experience you know so i think building a community of, i will not say unselfish workers because i don't i don't think you know you know that that's that's what one can look at it a corporate world but i think building a community of people who are eager to work for a greater purpose you know uh, you know in that and who are happier i think will help now you know we all talk about uh, this great resignation the great reshuffle and i'll just link it to the karma yoga you know if you look at karma yoga i think achieving it means you know liberation which is mukti and it is that whole inescapable you know as i was reading about it it is from the inescapable cycle of birth death and death so you know when we and it it is so linked to our great resignation and great, great reshuffle you know the resignation is when you when you look at saying i am done with the corporate world now i am at a stage where i am going to look for my own salvation purpose and go do something else or the other is we get into the same cycle of which is which i call the reshuffle when you move from one organization to the other you go through the same highs and lows and then over a period of time you go and look for another organization so you are on the same treadmill running it's just that the treadmill is changing So I know I I leave it there, and I hope you know I give the context. Beautiful, beautiful, Amit. I I really loved the way you you know joined the whole theory of you know uh, birth and rebirth, death and rebirth to you know changing jobs from one organization to another. <laughs> uh, very beautiful. So so what I hear the three of you are saying that yes, it is definitely possible in the current context to practice karma yoga, and it is just not possible. It is also beneficial. provided we are able to map the individuals purpose with the organization's purpose with the higher purpose so to say and as i hear uh, also i hear that the true practice of karma yoga might not be that easy because see it's transformational anything that is transformational is not easy you need to get out of your comfort zone you know it's it's like if you are 120 kg and you need to be on a transformational physical journey it's not easy you need to be get out of your comfort zone hit the gym or the treadmill every morning so that's how karma yoga is beautiful moving to the next question and i and i have a certain view on that but uh, first let me hear from uh, the three style words and i invite now amit you to uh, speak first on this can this be the great lesson to increase our performance productivity impact and create an inspired culture because bansal ji in the earlier answer said that it is also very cultural if you have a family or a society in which this is practiced then for you it is it becomes very easy to practice so my question is can karma yoga be one of the greatest lessons to increase our performance our impact to create an inspired culture can this be one of that tool amit 
it is a tough one. So let me try and, you know, give, give, give some thought. You know, if you look at uh, Bhagavad Gita, you know, and I'm sure all of us have had that, you know, that fame, whether you've read Bhagavad Gita or not, everyone knows of that famous dialogue between Krishna and Arjun in the midst of the battlefield, where Arjun, you know, virtually, inst Krishna virtually instructs the Arjun about performing his duties without the ego. You know, and that for me is very beautiful because I think the ego isolates us from our duties and our obligations. You know, and you know, if we are able to do an action, like I said, you know, which is, you know, which is karam yoga, which is in the service of the others. In the modern world, you know, like you said, I think every business, uh, Anish ji, has a financial a aspect and is very, very gold -driven. Right. So I, as I say, it, you know, and as, as I was thinking about it, you know, I don't think the Lord will say, don't ask for the salary or the salary raise, right, or the promotion. I think what the Lord would want to say is don't get attached to the material comforts that come because of the salary raise or the promotion or, or, the, or, or the money that you get. Of course, they are important. I'm not saying they are not important. I think all of us live in that world where we have material needs. But it is also our, you know, it's our duty to ensure that we get the right result. You know, what we, you know, if you look at, again, going back to that whole Gita episode, Krishna encouraged Arjun to do the war. You know, in Mahabharata, he encourages Yudhishthira to take up the kingdom. So he is not saying don't go for those needs. He's, he is saying, he's not so, you know, in a, in a today context of performance or creating a culture, he will not say leave your job or leave your salary if, if Krishna was to come in and give us that. Yeah. I think he would ask them that we should get the result, which is correct in the right manner. Which is which is which is good for the customer, who's the end objective. Which is good for our colleagues and employees, you know. And you know, he would say, do the right thing. If you see an injustice, he would say, don't accept that injustice. You know, whether it is unfairness in an organization, not doing the right behavior from a shareholder perspective, not doing the right thing for the customer. I think that is something that is there. Also, when you look at creating a performance impact and an inspired culture, I think somewhere the element comes in of how as an organization you know we look at failures and you know if you look at again being selfless being into the being supportive of others is also trying to you know get them to accept failure and you as a leader or as a manager or as a colleague accepting failures of people and you know and if we are able to build these elements into our performance i'm sure you know we will get the right culture and once we get the right culture, then, you know, the customer will see the purpose, the employees will see the purpose, they will see the brand. I don't think the dissonance would be there. So what the customer, what the brand says or the organization says it stands for and what the employees and the customer experience, if that alignment is there, I think that the performance and the culture would take. Beautiful. Beautiful, Amit putting it so practically relatable, so to say. Yeah. I, I invite Banshalji with your vast wisdom and experience of multiple uh, fields of work, so to say. Uh, do you think if, if we really start to practice Karam Yoga as an individual or as an organization, do you think it will have a great impact on performance, inspiration, impact uh, as a collective, as an organization? What's your view on that, Panjalji? Inspiration, yes. Okay, but again, let's be slightly more practical here. Amit knows, Anil knows, and to be honest, most of the friends sitting over here know. It is in any case your job, you, you may be at the top level or at the bottom most level, that you have to be getting into that path. I always say in, in some places, appear is more important than the boss. I don't forget that when I was working in the government, one Pierre Banwari Lal, I still don't forget him. Every time, I mean, I was having guests, one guest or visitor maybe every five minutes. And every time I had put him on duty, please save time save. Don't have to ask tea and then get it. But he will get late every time. And they asked Banwari Sham ko ek do wari pen ke yaar tu zara tere ko malum hai wo banda andar aa gaya hai tera sab kuch taiyar pada hai tu kya karta hai to mujhe sab staff ne bataya ke sab bhi har bari jab bhi koi chai pi ke jata hai sare ke sare crockery ko fir se sabun se dhota hai fir se leke aata hai okay so i am trying to say that uh, 
this is kind of a something which there is it is it is there in every human being in one way or the other okay so if you're a leader you can recognize it and you can appreciate it provided you to are somewhere on that journey it certainly i mean let me not be again questioning the performance part but certainly it leads to a very healthy environment around it certainly leads to a very peaceful environment around and it leads to a very satisfied environment around satisfied people and satisfied customers that has been my experience about it beautiful bansal ji i when you were narrating banwari lal's story you know what i was thinking that if this was a corporate instead of a government office uh, and and you kind of raised the point that maybe performance was an issue yeah well while he was doing perfection in action as karam yoga and i was thinking hmm maybe performance was not an issue had we looked at it differently in the sense that if this was a corporate you know they would have put his photograph and the entire story and they would have actually told every uh, visitor that look the chai that you're drinking every time he makes a tea the cup is neatly clean and the whole burden is clean and that that would become a great impact story you you, you see so much purity into your actions you know correct purity correct. into your thought purity into all the staff that is sitting around you correct they told me only that sir this is what he does wow. and i felt so grateful about it beautiful so this is karam yoga my friends in the practical day to day working yeah uh, coming to anil ji uh, we talked about performance impact and inspiring creating an inspiring culture do you think karam yoga can enable that as a tool or as a philosophy or as a practice yes i agree with it uh, uh, you see today everything can be copied technology you can borrow people you can borrow you can have the best of talent you can have best of technology but you cannot copy the culture the organizations those who are growing are only mainly because of the culture i recently my son uh, was applying for a job change and he got offer from four companies all multinational all from top number 1 2 3 and 4 and he did a study that which company culture is better as i said compatibility is more important than the competence and at times i say that aajkal hum gharon mein kehte hain bacche mobile pe lekar baithe hue hain ek ghar mein jaate hain to bachcha kitab pad raha hai ek ghar mein jaate hain to bachcha 3 saal ka bachcha bhi mobile pe dekh ke khana kha raha hai to kisi ne pucha hai ye aap kitab pad rahe hain ya bachcha bhi kitab pad raha hai farak kya hai wo bole ki hum bhi kitab pad rahe hain isliye bachcha kitab pad raha hai aur agar hum mobile dekhenge to bachcha bhi mobile dekhega culture top se drive hota hai i agree totally with bansal ji i have seen corporate leaders I have worked with uh, many uh, top leaders for more than two uh, four decades and i have seen but it has to drive from top to bottom kai log kya kehte hain bolte kuch hain karte kuch hain par agar aap jo bologe wahi karoge to hi culture niche aata hai otherwise har aadmi itna intelligent hai ki usko pata lag jata hai ki bol kya raha hai aur kar raha hai dusri baat aapne kahi performance ke upar i think there is a डिफरेंस हम लोग कई बार ग्रोथ को परफॉर्मेंस ले जाते हैं ग्रोथ इज नॉट अ परफॉर्मेंस ग्रोथ इज ओनली ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ टर्न ओवर ग्रोथ प्लस इथिक्स इज प्रोग्रेस ग्रोथ प्लस इथिक्स प्लस ह्यूमेनिटी प्लस मोरलिटी इज सक्सेस एंड कर्मा तो वही पर्पस आ जाता है कि पर्पस आपका क्या है पर्पस आपका ग्रोथ नहीं है और दूसरी अमित जी ने जो बात बोली थी आई जस्ट एड इन टू दैट so there is never a income gap in any of the industry or the organization there is always a skill gap unfortunately we are not making our students or the youth for skill we are only making them education aaj kisi company mein kisi aadmi ko 25000 pe milte hain kisi aadmi ko 25 crore pe milte hain aaj sundar pichoi ki salary jo hai kareeb kareeb 1500 crore se zyada ki hai per annum aur ek yahan par bhi employee hai jisko 25000 pe milte hain company kisi ko paisa nahi deti sir cows don't give milk you have to extract drop by drop so if you work on your skills and then the culture is there motivation is there inspiration is there i i use the word motivational speaker but i don't like that it is basically an inspirational speaker i can't motivate anyone i can only inspire the other person to motivate himself you can take a horse to a, a water pond but you can't make the horse drink the horse has to drink you have to make her is thirsty 
then only he will drink so i think it is an inspirational things and the last thing in your uh, word was that impact sir hamare ko kahani sunani nahi aani chahiye hamare ko pata hona chahiye ki impact kya aa raha 30 second mein bhi agar aap impact de doge तो वो पूरी रात रामायण पढ़ के फिर लोग सुबह पूछेंगे सीता कौन थी तो यू हैव टू बी वेरी क्रिस्प अगर आपका पर्पस क्लियर है इम्पैक्टफुल आप अपना बात कर सकते हैं तो आई थिंक आपकी परफॉर्मेंस भी अच्छी आ जाएगी आपकी इंस्पिरेशन भी अच्छी हो जाएगी और कल्चर भी अच्छा हो जाएगा कल्चर खाली गीता और रामायण की कहानी सुनाने से नहीं होगा कल्चर आपको डिपेक्ट करना पड़ेगा आप जो बोल रहे हैं वो कर रहे हैं या नहीं कर रहे अगर कर रहे हैं तो कर्मा है अगर नहीं कर रहे तो खाली ज्ञान है वो लोगों को पता लग जाता है कि ज्ञान दे रहे हो आप और ज्ञान कोई लेना नहीं चाहता आज की डेट में Beautiful, beautiful. So practical and straight, Anil ji. <laughs> Thank you. I I love the way you speak, and you know you just put it across the way it is, ah, huh? without um, mincing the words or you know crafting the words, so to say. Beautiful. बहुत कूप. Next thought, and I I I come to you, Bansal ji, for this first. There's been a lot of, especially during the pandemic time. There's lot of dialogue, lot of debate, lot of discussion around. Uh, you know well being employee well being etc uh, there's a lot of back to back sessions happening and suddenly psychologists and um, you know counselors are much in demand etc this practice of karam yoga could it impact people's well being you know at the body and the mind both level the practice of karam yoga let, let me say the practice of karam yoga can it really impact in a positive way well being of people What do you think about that? उसमें ऐसा है अगेन यू नो माई प्रॉब्लम वेरी वेरी डायरेक्ट आउट ऑफ वॉट एव गॉन थ्रू इन पेंडेमिक्स लाइक कोविड एंड अदर थिंग्स कर्म भी होगा तो किसी को ध्यान में नहीं होता ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यूर ट्राइंग टू सेव यूर ओन सेल्फ यूर फैमिली यूर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड इट्स एम्प्लॉयज ओके सो वहां पे वी मे कॉल इट कर्म योगा इन योर टर्म्स बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ अस वर नॉट ऑन टू स्पिरिचुअल जर्नी दे डू थिंग्स नॉट नोइंग दैट फॉर्चुनेटली श्री अनिश जी विल कॉल इट कर्म योगा ओके सो वी आर ग्रेटफुल दैट वट एव वी डेट पॉसिबली यू विल कॉल इट कर्म योगा सो थैंक्स फॉर दैट बट वी डू दीज थिंग्स आउट ऑफ आर ओन यू मे कॉल इट कंसर्न फॉर आर पीपल because they are a part of your family so i mean again i would say that in the two and a half years or two years of covid our output was far far better than the previous years our results are far far better than the previous years our examination which was scheduled from 24th of march 20 was postponed by two days only because two days we made every student shift to their parents and it took us 48 hours to go online for conduct of the examinations the entire faculty the entire staff worked maybe 18 hours during those first 12 months and then it became a habit for all of them most of them 60 to 70% being the ladies with no help at home with their in laws or parents staying along with small kids staying along so we we had to be understanding what they were doing mm-hmm. so we said you let me know when to hold a discussion we'll do that there's no fixed time and most of them they will say sir please we'll take a meeting at 9:30 in the night when all my things are over so i would say that and, and we we got all kind of your oxygen concentrators we we fixed a doctor on call for everybody and we we paid all our security staff they couldn't go home okay for three months we paid them double the salary so you and we said anybody requiring blood anybody requiring anything so whether all this is karma yoga we do not know we i just feel that wherever you are working you are the head of the family or you are part of the family so this is the only thing and for you know the culture we have tried to 
make is that nobody has ever left us. Beautiful. Nobody has ever ever left us. But whether it is karma yoga, you will know it better. Yeah. <laughs> that Bansal ji, this absolutely qualifies as karma yoga. Absolutely qualifies as karma yoga. So I'm glad that you know, an institution and as a head of the institution, you created that culture, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, thanks for giving us that dose of inspiration, Bansal ji. Coming to uh, Anil ji, but with a slightly different question, Anil here. Uh, I'm looking at the time, so I'm just skipping and adding another element here, Anil, is that from the real life scenario, from real life example, can you pick up or share with us example of an individual or an organization which you think is practicing Karam Yoga? Real life practical example. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I'll say uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam is the person and Tata is the organization. And I'll narrate with a small Hindi quote. He says, Same nadi ki dhar ki aksar sab bhe jaya karte hai. Hai same bada balwan prabhal parvat juk jaya karte hai. Jaha bethe hai. Hai same nadi ki dhar ki aksar sab bhe jaya karte hai. Same bada balwan prabhal parvat juk jaya karte hai. Aksar dunia ke log same mein chakar khaya karte hai. Humare jaysay. Unless you have the wisdom. पर कुछ डॉक्टर अब्दुल कलाम जैसे होते हैं जो इतिहास बनाया है क्या बात क्या तो आई आई कोट अब्दुल कलाम एज दिस एंड आई कोट टाटा एज द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन दिस कांटेस्ट बिकॉज़ आई थिंक इफ यू एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट माय सन गॉट एन ऑफर एंड ही डिड द कल्चरल काइंड ऑफ अ स्टडी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में क्या होगा कैसे होगा तो आई थिंक आज अगर किसी को टाटा में ऑफर मिलती है and i'll not quote the other company name <laughs> because that won't be the right i think people would go to tata at a lower salary aur jab abhi tata ko uh, air india ko tata ne liya to hum sab logo ko ye tasalli thi ki chala le shayad koi aur company hoti to shayad wo kehte ki shayad nahi chala sakte aur tata ki agar aap dekhenge value systems wagera to hai integrity hai responsibility hai aapne bola excellence hai pioneering hai unity hai सेल्फ केयरिंग है उन लोगों के ऊपर भी पूरा ध्यान रहता है तो आई थिंक एज देर आर मेनी पर्सन आई एम नॉट सेइंग दैट देर आर मेनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एज एन इश्यू हैव आस्क्ड मी वन पर्सन सो आई एडमायर डॉक्टर अब्दुल कलाम लास्ट मोमेंट तक भी वो लेक्चर देते थे थे उनकी डेथ हुई एंड ही वाज सो सिंपल एज अ पर्सन एंड टाटा आई रेट एज इन द इंडियन कंटेस्ट आई रेट एज वन ऑफ द ग्रेट कंपनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जहां से हमें ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का कल्चर को अडेप्ट करना चाहिए कॉपी नहीं करना चाहिए मैं कहता हूँ कॉपी नहीं कर सकते आप उसको अगर उनकी अच्छी चीजें हैं तो अगर आप उनको अडेप्ट कर सकोगे अपने घर में भी कर सकोगे तो ज्यादा अच्छी बात है राधर देन की ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ब्यूटीफुल ब्यूटीफुल अनिल जी एंड जस्ट टू एड इन वन क्विक एलिमेंट देयर आई वॉज रीडिंग समवेयर मेनी मेनी ईयर्स अगो वेन जमशेद जी टाटा वॉज फॉर्मिंग टाटा एंड टाटा वॉज यू नो बिकमिंग अ लार्ज एंड दिस इज प्री इंडिपेंडेंस ट्रांसफर आई थिंक दिस इज अबाउट एटीन एटी थ्री और एटीन नाइनटी थ्री Jamshed ji on a ship is going to uh, America and on that ship Swami Vivekanand was also there and they both happened to meet what happened between both of them what they talked nobody knows because uska koi record nahi hai but after that meeting Jamshed ji Tata started doing lot of employee welfare activities wo PF or ESI aur us tarah ki cheeze Tata's ne us samay introduce ki the entire philanthropy started happening IIS Indian Institute of Science ki sthapna bhi uske baad hui where you know jamshed ji was the key element there uh, and i tend to believe because i do not know the conversation but i tend to believe because of my deep connection with swami vivekananda that swami vivekananda on that ship on that particular day did talk about karam yoga to jamshed ji tata and that changed the course of tata thereafter that's what i feel you know i don't know the the real uh, what, what transpired between both of them yeah great uh, amit coming to you one individual example and one organizational example if you can give of what you feel people or organization who really practice karam yoga i don't individual i will share two okay. of them you know okay. as as i was reflecting on when you asked anil ji this question on an, on an, on an organization i think you know more than organization i believe that if you look at our own scriptures and you know like vedas and the bhagavad Uh, and the open shit i think they lay down a con- they lay down the rules of how we should conduct ourselves you know how we should conduct on a day to day basis values and beliefs that shape our action and i think that's something that you know one needs to go back to and refer correct on the people piece there are two people i have you know i have always uh, 
idolized in my life and i think both of them have i've always felt practice this and i'll share why one is obviously mahatma gandhi right you know and i've always felt that you know he he did what he thought was right for the greater irrespective of whether people joined him or he was so in his own conviction he was so deep rooted to say i think this is right for the larger even if people don't see it today and even if they don't practice it today you know uh, he would he would he would do, he would he would join, he would just go in and if people wanted they could join in and the penance that he took for someone else's action mm-hmm. i thought was was a revelation you know you going on a hunger because someone burnt a village somewhere the other is nelson mandela and i you know if you look at his action from a revolutionary a reactionary to the prison and to coming out you know it's the later part which i admire when he became the president of or the leader of south africa you know he it was for it was a choice that he had on the path that he could have taken he took inclusivity he took he took you know that service to the others he took off a rainbow society as it is called and you know his action and his words forged the south africa that is there today which could have which could have been destroyed or you know gone in the other direction and i think he was so he put his self behind you know saying it doesn't matter what happened with me it is what i do in my actions and how can that impact i thought is a very classic example of someone doing that so, you know those yeah. are the two people that have all this so beautiful and i think amit both of them according to the seven tenets that i shared if you map it to that you know both of them qualifies as karma yogis absolutely great great example samit thank you now there are tons of questions we've got uh, this is an exciting topic i feel uh, but before we take up the questions i i come to you uh, dear panelist with one request could each one of you give us two actionables action pointers which can transform my action and usually our actions are very self motivated self oriented self gain specific how do i transform my action to become karma yoga can you give me two practical pointers for the for the for the entire participants i i start with anil ji two pointers here Uh, anish uh, success does not come by reading or memorizing the principle that lead to success success it comes by implementing that on daily basis so one is your habits good habits are difficult to come easy to live with bad habits are easy to come difficult to live with so you have to make a list of your duties what you have to do whether role and in your life you live many lives within one life every 5 years you are transforming from 20 to 25 is a different life 25 to 30 is a different life you don't know what is going to happen from 25 30 to 35 35 to 40 so transformation is there you have to be there and the other thing is that you have to prioritize you have to be focused you prioritize yourself and make a habit on a daily basis to fulfill the things unless you do wo kabir ne kaha hai sir ki nahay dhoe kya hua jab man mein mail samaye machli sada jal mein rahe dhoe bhas na jaye so you have to do the transformation from within yourself rather than telling someone else doing brush in the night is a habit which you have to do in morning you do because you have a compulsion going for a morning walk is from inside not doctor should prescribe you that you have to do the things and all so internal transformation is more important and in this i think habits are very very important and if you have good habits it's very easy to live you have bad habits it's very difficult to live so habits are very very important beautiful. point thank you beautiful anilji habits and prior priorities two two insights from anilji how to transform our action to karam yoga bansal ji two two insights practical pointers sir i can uh, i cannot be kind of preaching so i'll only say one thing that has been happening to me not that i'm doing anything so i'll share that practical thing is that whenever i sit back starting from my childhood to till today nothing has happened that i had planned it that way or i wanted that way nothing means nothing everything has happened the way it was ordained and i to care that everything is a blessing every day and every morning when i get up i tell my god i am up to you whatever you want me to do today i'll do that and in the night i tell him ke bhai i try to live up to your expectation i do not know so that is all so nothing has happened by my doing 
everything and every small thing it may be now education it may be my civil service it may be my different roles 99% some of my colleagues with whom i was working hand in glove they got into most serious problems in life that they lost their careers they were behind the bars nobody even came and questioned me one one thing about anything so whatever has happened it's just happened for which i just continue to be grateful every morning and evening so nothing to preach what to do because i do not know what to do at all yeah but but with that insight uh, bansal ji you actually given a great profound secret to all of us uh, and for the benefit of the participants i will put that into words uh, three words that actually you said uh, you've basically said the attitude of acceptance gratitude and surrender and this to me friends is a very profound insight if we can develop as part of our karma yoga practice attitude of acceptance attitude of gratitude and attitude of surrender uh, then life is really blissful and impactful and um, you know uh, a joy to live thank you bansal ji for for sharing this mantra with us uh, amit uh, from your wisdom bucket to two practical insights for all of us to practice i think i've been you know listening to all of you and you know you started with it from your story of uh, the expedition and you know that stayed with me and, you know when i heard everyone i think it's both the emphasis on process and the outcome in an ideal world we would say don't look at the outcome but i think outcome is equally important so i think it's the emphasis on process and the outcome you know even if the outcome is favorable and the process is not the way it should have been you wouldn't find happiness or you wouldn't find contentment or satisfaction of that true sense of achievement in that outcome so i think it's it's equally important for us as we go through you know and in a, like you said means and the ends both matter you know it's not about one or the other how do you balance it in life that's up to you sometimes the balance tilts towards the other sometimes the balance tilts slightly but how do you balance it but you have to make that i think the second one that you know i think bansal ji also said and for me i was thinking about it is kindness and equanimity you no know, kindness towards others that we do in our life you know without with you know you know it's it's very easy to be kind kindness comes free you don't have to do anything to be kind but you know it's something that we do not consciously do it so if we are able to imbibe that and when i say equanimity because you know it's very difficult to be kind towards people taking your feelings out of it i may not like somebody i may not hate that person but i may not like him either or her either but that doesn't that should not stop me from being kind towards that person if i get the opportunity that's where i want to bring that whole equanimity piece you know and that's where the whole karma yoga for me comes in. so if we focus on these two things i think we should yeah. be there very profound amit this equanimity is uh, in the in the vedanta sadhana is one of the or even the buddhist sadhana is one of the top pinnacle if you are able to establish in ikvi pause equanimity uh, it's a it's a great achievement on uh, your inner spiritual evolutionary journey so i'm glad um, you talked about that and you talked about the process and the outcome which is you know is journey more important or the destination and you said both uh, usually people ask this question is journey more important the destination and you have to choose one <laughs> actually what we should do this to me that question is wrong the journey is very, very important the destination is also very important and the company that's third element with whom are you traveling that's also very very important because that can be a game changer again <laughs> so i'm i'm glad you you talked about that beautiful friends beautiful thanks a lot dear panelists for bringing so much of wisdom in such such short amount of time we've covered such a vast expanse of topics and thoughts and insights okay looking at the time gp with your kind permission can i enter into taking questions from the participants yeah yeah mm. okay colonel jyotirmaya satpati has asked a question which is a bit of a uh, interesting question he says or he asks is karam yoga a journey of karma to become a yogi or a yoga on the path of karma <laughs> yeah i'll repeat the question because i thought the question is very interesting is karma yoga a journey of karma to become a yogi or a yoga on the path of karma um, can i take that question with, with your permission panelist okay <laughs> okay uh colonel chab there are two ways to look at it 
And in the discussion, we talked about what is the purpose you're looking at. If the purpose of your life you're looking at is the final liberation or mukti as Bansalji in between mentioned, then karma becomes, the, the karma yoga then becomes a journey of karma to become a yogi. But if you are a householder, you are in the world performing your actions and duties and the rest of it, then it is, then karma yoga is yoga on the path of karma. You're continuing to doing your karma, but attaching the element of yoga so that everything becomes A, purified, to good for the world. In Hindi, we use the word jagat kalyana. And when you do that, you bring a lot of happiness to your own self and to the world around. Yeah. So it depends which side you're looking at it from. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Mm. Okay, this is interesting. Kalpana Singh asks, where do we place the concept of Nishkam Karma, which is basically Karma Yoga, while setting targets or working towards the intended objective of the Karma in organizational contact and otherwise in life? Let me repeat. Where do we place the concept of Karma Yoga while setting targets or intended objective in organizational context or otherwise in life? Uh, and I come to Anilji to you for that because uh, what she's asking is how do I put Karam Yoga as a concept into practice when everything that we are doing is doing with an end objective in mind let's say in an organizational setup how do you then bring Karam Yoga into play Anilji you see organization also uh, has two kind of uh, uh, things uh, most of the organization are working for the shareholders but in my view I think uh, the, the I read the book of Vineet Nayar where he says employee first. So the uh, the concept of uh, as I told earlier that if the purpose is told to the people, the purpose of the organization is not to do a charity. The purpose of the organization is to earn money, but to earn money the when the the entire chain whether the employees are there, whether the channel partners are there, the stakeholders are there. If the purpose is made very clear to them, then I think the, the you are doing the things in a right way. Because I don't say that your values and principles should be there. You can't grow an organization without values and principles like Mahatma Gandhi or Swami Vivekanand or uh, any any spiritual leader or even Nelson Mandela or uh, things or even like uh, uh, all the great leaders. They all had the values and principles. So we have to tell our uh, the entire uh, organization people that we have to uh, see to it that the values and principles are there. But the uh, end goal is basically earning money because if the money is with the good people, it is good for the uh, world. If money is with the bad people, I think it is not good for the thing. So we, we should we should tell the purpose very clearly that why we are there into the business. And if the purpose is told to the people, then I think people respond in a right. Beautiful. Thank you, Anilji. Thank you. Uh, there's another interesting question which is connecting to this. And um, first, let me read out the question. And this is from Deepak Bharara. And he says, asks, Life is a struggle. We keep fighting for survival and sustenance. Many a time we compromise also. How do we ensure karma and service for purpose on a constant basis? Then he also says the second part, what is most important, money or purpose? <laughs> okay, who wants to pick that up? Let me repeat the question once again. He says, life is a struggle. We keep fighting for survival and sustenance. Many a time we compromise. How do we ensure karma and service in this process when we are fighting for struggle and survival all the time? Second part of the question he asks, what is more important, money or purpose? I'll, I'll reply the second one. Yes. Money is as important as fuel in the car. Correct. If you have a car with 40 liter capacity, you can only have 40 liters. So money is Correct. required for that for driving on a daily basis. So money is required. I don't say money is not required. So if the purpose is clear, then I think so uh, you, you can, you, you, you know, like for 40 years I have done a, as a professional career. But at the age of 60, my purpose is different. My purpose, I could have uh, worked for another five years or 10 years to uh, earn more money because my children are settled, my family is settled. Now purpose is to give back to the organization. First is learning, then is earning. And third stage is giving back to the society. If, yeah. if your purpose is clear, then I think so your intentions, your self-gain, your purity, your all the components which you have said, 
uh, they they come into the place. So you are you have to see to it that what is your purpose in that part of your life. I won't say that a person at forty years should come and leave the organization and do the things what I am doing. Correct. Beautiful. And and if I have to respond to it, I'll respond. Money is important for the purpose. Yeah. So so I hope it makes sense. And the first part of the question was. and many times we have to compromise because it's a continuous survival and sustenance how do we ensure karma yoga practice in this amit will you take that up yeah that's a difficult one and you know coming from deepak bahara ji i don't expect an easy question but <laughs> i him personally he is he's very learned so i think you know i think uh, that's correct i think uh, the test of your purpose or your actions is when 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 the going is difficult it's very you know like people say it's very easy to be philanthropic when you have billions of dollars right it's very difficult to give that 1 rupee when you have 5 rupees in your pocket you know i think that context is very important similarly i i agree that you know it's very difficult but compromise it would be foolish to say that we don't compromise in our life but it is about where do you draw a line of compromise all of us have certain principles that we live our life with right or wrong and they vary from each one of us i have certain principles and other people you look at that principle and say you know in my struggle in my in my need to do for my family for for my you know organization there are certain things that i would where is the red line that i am going to draw and say beyond this compromise it starts to affect me personally and that is non negotiable i think we all need to have individual lines for that and you know there is no right or wrong position of that line it's an individual line once you have that line then it's a question for you to ask saying can you sustain going below that line or that's your cut off line where you say this is not for me i will do something else i will try somewhere else i will, i i will i will relook at my action i think that's for me is important beautiful very well put amit very well put when you said that you know there has to be certain values in our lives which are non negotiable yeah very beautiful and if you can do that you know then life becomes really easy with that i'll just add a one element to this uh, deepak ji if we can all start to practice along with karam yoga a, an attribute called fearlessness because i don't agree with this that we are you know that life is a struggle and we are struggling for survival and sustenance we are not we are more we all have moved beyond survival and sustenance uh and if we can think about that and then keep fearlessness as an attribute uh, then life becomes absolutely crystal clear all our actions and all our choices and decisions yeah um prashant gupta has asked will you call servant leadership an example of karam yoga i'll repeat will you call servant leadership as an example of karam yoga uh, bansal ji your thought if you may want to no no that's okay you have to be honest you give it whatever name i have never been very fancy of the name that you give to it okay you may be talking that you are servant leader and you may be behaving differently so it has to it has to become part of you know your actions part of your thinking primarily it's not what you display it is what you are if you are a servant leader it will be visible to your team and it will be visible to the whole world rather so you don't have to coin a name a fancy name just to please people that's what i feel yeah yeah beautiful beautifully said beautifully said uh looking at the time uh gp can we take one last question yeah okay 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 and this question is from uh shrikant and he asks how to incorporate selflessness in daily life and the path of selfless action and the reason i chose this so that we are able to give all of us you know a very very uh, some some bulleted points on that let me repeat the question how to incorporate selflessness in daily life i can rephrase the question how to practice karam yoga because that's selflessness uh, shall i go ahead with this with, with your permission hello yeah okay i'm going to very quickly Yeah, am I audible? GP, am I audible? Okay, I'm very qu- quickly. I'm going to share just five key points on this particular question: how to practice karam yoga or selfless service. The first is see, greet, and meet. So we often look at people, but we don't see them. We greet them, but we greet them very, 
you know, as an automatic process. Not we are not mindful when we are seeing somebody and greeting somebody. Yeah. And then really meet them. If you hold their hands and shake their hands, do it. Just don't do it as a as a as a as a habit or anything, you know. You must be totally present there. So that's one. Be very, very inclusive in your thoughts, words, and action. Which means whatever thoughts that I'm generating, whatever actions that I'm generating, whatever words that I'm saying, be very, very inclusive in that. That's number two. And this will help enabling selflessness. Number three, have a service attitude. Look at every opportunity, everything that comes in front of you as an opportunity to help somebody or to be of service, if you can develop that attitude. And fourth is, usually our thought is about in any situation, what is it that I gain from this? Uh, and I've, I've learned this from GP, uh, from you, this beautiful phrase called giver's gain. Yeah. So instead of looking at any situation as to what can I gain, change the perspective to that what can I give. Yeah. So from gain to give, if you can change that perspective on a daily basis, if you can keep a remembrance of that. And the last is start to focus more on the right action based on Swadharma. All of us have a Swadharma. Be extremely focused on performing the right action based on that and not get trapped with the or overly obsessed with the desired outcomes or, you know, your own preferences, etc. If you can do that, you know, selflessness will happen. These are my five quick takes on that. Yeah, anybody wants to add anything on this? I can, I can add one. Uh, Bansal ji. Yes, please, Bansal ji. Please go ahead, Daniel. Please. please. No, 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 Bansal ji, you are No, no. No, no. I was only. It. In fact, it is not addition to this. Perhaps I'm trying to say what I feel, or I've been trying to feel, is that every day, every day, whatever task, baat wo dharma ki baat, baat sari umar guzarne ke baad, thoda thoda bhi samjh jaane laga ke dharma hota kya hai. सारी उम्र यही चलता रहा कि हिंदू धर्म है कि सिख धर्म है ओके अब थोड़ी सी क्लैरिटी होने लगी है कि नहीं धर्म का मतलब कुछ और है तो मेरा केवल यही कहना है दैट योर धर्मा इज टू गेट यू द रिजल्ट एज मेंशन गेट द रीच द टारगेट बट एंड एंड देन फॉर दैट पर्पस यू हैव टू पुट योर 100% रियल थिंग इज दैट ओके problem is we do not put 100% and then we blame our team our our then we blame god and everything we have to put 100% and then come and sleep ke i have done my duty now it's up to you in the morning to nikalna to kar bhi meri tarf se koi kami nahi chutti so this is what one has been trying to do one has failed so many times in life but one feels ke raat ke che 2 baj jaye maine apna kaam khatam karke sona hai so why it is your goal whatever you do you do so you leave it to the god because the result is not in your hands beautiful beautiful I, uh, you, yes anil please anish uh, one minute uh, there are three words vichar vyavhar and sanskar vichar is your thinking vyavhar is how you behave you can pretend you can behave you can pretend your behavior also but the third word is very very important that is sanskar what actually you are what we are talking about what culture you have so i think positive thinking anyone can have you can pretend vyavhar also you can do it for a short period of time but what actually you are you should be uh, that only koi bhi aapko jise aapne kaha na word means nahi karna chahiye aur last mein jata hai main bolna chahunga wo kehte hain zindagi sabhi ke liye haseen kitab hai zindagi sabhi ke liye ek haseen kitab hai farak sirf itna hai ki koi har panne ko dil se pad raha hai और कोई किसी का दिल रखने के लिए पन्ने पलट रहा है हर पल में प्यार है हर लम्हे में खुशी है जी लो तो जिंदगी और खो दो तो यादें गॉड हैज गिवन अस ए ब्यूटीफुल लाइफ वी एवरी डे वी गेट ए रिवर सो वी शुड एंजॉय आर लाइफ एंड डू दी सर्विस फॉर दिस प्लेनेट अर्थ रादर देन ओनली फॉर दंट्री और फॉर आर रिलीजन और फॉर आर फैमिली प्लेनेट अर्थ शुड बी टेकन एज ए ग्लोबल ग्लोबल वे रादर देन लुकिंग एट मी माई सेल्फ माई फैमिली माई कंट्री or my religion thank you very much thank you anil thank you anil thank you anil amit you you wanted to add something quickly i just wanted to bring in a different perspective you know all of you spoke about selflessness and i just want you know it's it's more a word of caution honestly more than other than a thought ke you know we have to be very very cognizant that you cannot be selfless 24 hours a day 
you get opportunities to be selfless or to demonstrate selflessness. How well we use that opportunity will lead to our own satisfaction and internal balance. If we just try to be selfless, all you know, all your like some people can, but most of us cannot. And I think that balance is very important. Otherwise, we will go to the other end of the con continuum and have a lot more of other problems that we are that you know we are trying to solve. I think that consciousness of the opportunity to be selfless and then do the right thing is very important. Beautiful. Thanks, Amit, for adding that great insight. Yes, totally agree with you. And uh, before I hand it over to GP, uh, I remember I said I'll share with you nine key benefits that you get out of Karam Yoga. So we don't have time to share nine. We will send you over an email. Uh, so two things we will do. Uh, one, send you these nine uh, benefits of performing Karam Yoga. And also there are a lot of unanswered questions in the chat. Uh, we will compile these questions, go to all the panelists, get their views and answers on that and send you via a newsletter, uh, hopefully within a week's time. Uh, and last thing is, out of the nine benefits of Karam Yoga, one benefit Bansalji has talked about. So I thought I'll just quickly tell you the ninth benefit of Karam Yoga, the ninth, the last benefit of Karam Yoga is an absolute good night's sleep. You don't have to pop any pills or, you know, drink some liquids to, to, to get a good night's sleep. If you do practice selflessness if you do your karma yoga in the right way good night sleep is guaranteed yeah i'll share the other eight over email over to you gp over to you i think <laughs> spellbound and what a session i think it's a uh, in your language it's a buddha moment uh, i mean lots of wisdom lots of insights tips and practical uh, you know, examples so it's a wonderful session. Uh, time is always a constraint. And as you said, it's a journey. And all of us people who joined here today, we are all part of the journey now. He said, with whom you are traveling? Each one of you in the audience, you are a leader and you can inspire many more. But then together we have to complete and go forward on the journey and as any shared journey as a destination. And uh, these kind of discourses probably they give us the GPS. So are you on the right path? <laughs> are you going with the right speed? Are you traveling with the right people? And uh, are, have you crossed the right milestones uh, so that we are nearer the, the, the truth or the ultimate destination? So wonderful. So thank you, Sri Anish. Thank you, uh, dear brother, Dr. Bansal, Anil Bhai, and Amit. It was a wonderful session. Thank you, audience. Uh, thank you, our IT team and the organizing team. And as promised, all the unanswered questions will be put up to the panelists and Sri Anish, and we will send you the answers. And as Sri Anish promised, uh, those nine commandments are the guidelines and the tips, those are also shared. And we'll also share a recording of today's session, slightly edited format, so that it's for your reference and you can share with others. That's how the journey continues. So before we close, so there is something called as a concluding remarks. So each one of you is empowered. You are responsible and you are committed and you must Please write down one takeaway, one learning, one idea that occurred to your mind in the chat box. That becomes the conclusion of today's session. We'll compile that. Each one of you should write something, one takeaway, one idea, one thought, one insight, one deep, anything. Please write down. That's the concluding address. In lieu of the concluding address, it's a collective collation of the wisdom. So with that, we will call it formally closed. We'll keep the Zoom on so that there can be an informal interaction and chat. Uh, IT team, please keep the Zoom uh, active for some more time. Thank you so much. Thank you, GP. Thank you, Bansalji, for your profound insights. Thank you, Anilji, for your thought-provoking ideas, your insights, and your beautiful poetry. And thank you, Amit, for always bringing a very, very different and new perspective to the to the topic of discussion. So I really, really value that. Thank, 
and thanks to all the dear participants for your insights for your you know uh, intriguing questions and for such a brilliant participation thanks a lot thank you very much